Oh, and just like that, the holiday seasons are upon us. Uh, Halloween came and went, unfortunately, but uh, I guess the holiday season starts November 1st. It seems to start earlier every year. I'm convinced that next year they're just going to start it on Halloween. But um, you know what? We're not going to let that happen. But what we are going to do is we're going to tie our sponsorship with Cryptid Crate into the holiday season because what better way to celebrate the holidays than with a Cryptid Crate? Because this way we're keeping the creepy and the spooky from Halloween and we're just kind of moving all the way into the new year. And there you go. You got your, uh, some people might like Yuletide. You know what? I like the Mothman. So so there it is. So Cryptid Crate, be sure to visit cryptidcrate.com and enter our promo code Grampus. That's G-R-A-M-P-U-S at checkout to get 10% off the entire life of your Cryptid Crate subscription. Cryptid Crate is a monthly subscription box filled with various cryptozoology and paranormal themed items to wear, display, and collect. Each month, you can expect a carefully curated box filled with creeptastic pieces from indie makers and artisans pertaining to Bigfoot, Sasquatch, UFOs, ghosts, and other cryptid and mysterious creatures. And again, at checkout, be sure to enter our promo code GRAMPUS, that's G-R-A-M-P-U-S, to get 10% off the entire life of your Cryptid Crate subscription. So when you get, you know, when you're doing your shopping and you're like, man, what am I going to get this guy? I don't know what, or this girl, I don't know what to get this person. Like, and then you're like, oh yeah, I remember Mark talking about Cryptid Crate and how we're going to like, it's going to be like the Mothman versus like the reindeer. It's going to be some sweet intergalactic paranormal battle at the North Pole. Use our promo code Grampus at checkout, G-R-A-M-P-U-S, and you're going to get 10% off the entire life of your subscription, and you're going to be bringing the creepy into the holiday season, and I think everyone's going to be super stoked about it. So there you go. And also, too, thank you very much to Cryptid Crate. They have been a longtime sponsor of this podcast, and we uh, we appreciate them and all they do. So so thank you very much, Derek and Cryptid Crate. We, uh, we appreciate it. Uh, this week, with this episode, we want to give a special shout-out to a buddy of ours across the pond, Kieran. Um, it's kind of funny when uh, he just recently sent us a message on Facebook and was like, "Oh, hey, you guys should, uh, you know, you guys should do this Owl Man of Cornwall episode." And I'm like, "Yeah, you know, actually, we we do have that on our working short list, which is getting longer. I'm not sure how that's happening, but anyway." So, uh, and it just so happens, uh, an hour after I talked with Kieran on Facebook, Rob sent me the uh, story for the week, and it was the Owl Man of Cornwall. So uh, there you go. It was kind of cool. It was a little. Uh, cool little uh, happenstance that happened there so so yeah that's dope so uh so kieran what's up my dude hope you and the fam are well so without further ado christopher cue that creepy music Welcome to the Kryptonite Podcast. I'm Mark Storrs, and with me as always is... Crass. And... Rob Morphy. Thank you for joining us, as always. Social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, come by and say hi. I love that. Oh, yeah, geez. I'm there. We're talking. We're hanging out. We're having a good time. We're sharing pictures of awesome things that some of our listeners were. Oh, on. yeah. Yes, we sure. are. I've been mind-bogglingly blown tonight. Yeah. Um, real quick, we have two listeners. They have some projects out there that we want to tell you guys about. All right, so on Instagram, we got I Really Love Pixels, who posted up today that he did a 3D-printed, I'm going to show you guys a picture right now, Space Penguin mm. of oh, that's Scumbia. fucking awesome. And it is fucking dope. Yeah, that's wicked. It is oh, super cool. One of my favorite aliens and now in 3D. Yes. And now these are available for sale at his Etsy shop. So we are going to have the link for this uh, in the description of this podcast. So you good listeners can go check it out. And he was kind enough to give us a show on the packaging. On the packaging, yeah. I know, right? It's super I mean, dope. That made me feel like a little kid. Yeah. I yeah, was like, I, oh my God, I'm on a... I'm on a toy, even though I know it's not technically a toy, it's a collectible. Oh, it's a toy. It is a toy. I would play with it. I would, you have to get at least three. I'd build yeah. my own mushroom spaceship. And I'd be like, oh, I'm hanging out in Missouri. Oh, there's a farmer. And it would just be endless hours of fun. Yeah. I'm going to put my space penguins next to my NECA predators oh. and see who will win the uh, ultimate know, space battle. You know, I'm voting space penguins. They have force fields. There you go. They're tiny, but they super totally fast. No, that is true. Yeah. They can know. breathe in any environment. Totally. Um, also, too, <laughs> it's really not a lineup of great skills. I don't give a fuck. I like them better. 
Also, too, on Instagram, we got Clarissa Wilcox. She recently released a print of, uh, she took some inspiration from our Dump Cat episode. Oh, yeah. And she did this super cool, it like, was awesome. grunge punk Old rock punk poster. punk rock flyer. Yeah, yeah, so that's super cool. You know, as an artist, I'm like, I love other people's art. But I, if I get that little twinge of jealousy, you know it's good. Totally. And I was looking at going, damn, why didn't I think of yeah. that? It's super dope. It is awesome. It's she awesome. did a phenomenal so job. So we're going to have links for both of those products. And I believe they are both available on Etsy. We're going to have links for those in the description of this podcast. So you good folks out there can check it out. I'm going to say that I already ordered my uh, both of these items. And I jumped on them early and often because that's what I do. Yeah, you do. So, uh, yeah, pick yours up. I picked mine up. Awesome. Also, too, speaking of, uh, let's say business. Let's go into the business Ooh, territory business. real quick. We've got stuff for sale in a big cartel store. Oh, yeah, we've got uh, we got some pins and we got some stickers and we got a magnet. It's going to be all in this cool little package. So it's like a little like swag package that you can get. Mm. So you can uh, head up our big cartel store with the link with that will also be in the description of this podcast. And magnets. Yeah, there's a magnet and a in postcard and a postcard. So it's a cavalcade of yeah. crypto not love. It's, it is. So this week we were talking about the Owl Man of Cornwall. Indeed. And for the record, there's no walls of corn there. That's a misnomer. They just named it Cornwall. Okay. All right, so we're going to get started with this crimson-eyed, crab-clawed, owl-like entity was first seen haunting the chapel. Excellent Slayer reference, Thank you. Robert. Mm. Near a wood-shrouded church that had been erected in the Middle Ages and is said to have stalked the young women of the Cornwall area for over four years. Decades. No, that's called dedication. Wow. That's like next level creep. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, if you're going to stalk someone for 40 years. Just hanging out, being creepy. Super creep. Just don't linger. Just stop hovering over the young ladies, man. Maybe. It's, maybe. it's well, 2018. It's, it's a different time. You, know you can't is? pull it off anymore. It's gross. It's grody it's to the super max. Gross. Well, not maybe not for Almond. Almond. <laughs> <laughs> I was going wondering how long was it take for us to slip an almond. Maybe those were his orders. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, 40, you're right. 40 years on this person. <laughs> Jack <laughs> Almond. By the way, it's multiple women. Young women <laughs> oh, have been right. predominantly the victims, for lack of a better term, um, of the owl man's interest. So, the first note encounter with the bizarre owl like entity that would come to be known as the Owl Man of Cornwall, though. For the sake of completeness, sometimes it is also referred to as the Cornish Owl Man or the Owl Man of Monon, which is a hard word for me to say. Yeah. Not really, Monon, but it doesn't really seem like it should be a real word. When you read it, it's tough to say. Yeah. Mm. The first known encounter with the bizarre owl like entity that would come to be known as the Owl Man of Cornwall, sometimes referred to as the Cornish Owl Man or the Owl Man of Monon, occurred on April 17th, 1976. The first eyewitness to this enigmatic apparition were a pair of sisters, 9-year-old Vicky and 12-year-old June Melling, who were on holiday with their family in Cornwall. While walking through a forest on a warm spring evening, the sisters spied what they described as a huge winged creature hovering over the steeple of the Monon Church, which was initially constructed in the 13th century. And just based on that alone, pure evil. Everything built in the 13th 13, century that's is just, just pure evil. It's, yeah. We have to just agree on that. It's all haunted. Oh, yeah. All of it. It's ancient, nefarious yeah. shit. The walls if, if we see a, a, a building that was built in like the 19th century anywhere, we're like, oh, my God, it's clearly the oldest thing ever. But yeah, yeah. I think in Europe, there's like... Just ridiculous yeah. old shit. Yeah, totally. Totally. It's so impressive. It's all haunted. All the walls bleed. Oh, jeez. Ah. Wow. Continue. Do they all bleed? All the stones bleed. The youngsters ah. were so terrified. Bad hardcore. <laughs> The youngsters were so terrified by this flying fiend that they immediately ran back to tell their father, Don Melling, about what they had seen. Don, realizing how genuinely frightened his children were, cut their vacation short by three days and immediately returned home to Lancaster. That's a l jump on the gun a little bit, I think. Well, they're terrified. They okay. don't want to be in this place right. with a monster that's flying over a church but you're gonna amid really, the wood. I mean, Dude. look, good on him for, for making the call and being like, girls... Out of here. I'm taking your feelings into consideration. But yes. are you really going to cut your vacation three days short? Yeah, it seems weird. You know, you think like, you'd go somewhere else. Well, it's, that, that's got to be like a medical emergency, like he cut his foot off. Oh, my or God. Something major. Come on. Really? Yeah. If you, Amputation is then, the only yeah, reason to cut your fucking vacation I'm, short? Or, or like death in a family. All right, fair you enough. Know? Or like your boss called and you got to work or something. Or your shit. fucking daughter see a horrific monster and they're fucking psychologically I'm scarred. Say, I'm not saying that he made a bad call. He made a good call. <laughs> 
What I'm saying, though, is it may have been jump of the gun just a smidge bit. So you'd be that douchey dad if your kids came and saw a monster and like, we're going to hold this out. We've got this room for another two days. And then they get fucking abducted by almonds and you're you're done. You're yeah, no longer actually, a dad. More than likely. That's, yeah. Well, that's, cool. that's a good point. Yeah. Wow. Worst dad ever. I'll accept the abduction. Continue. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this bizarre tale might have languished in the annals of strange family legends to be discussed only occasionally and in the secure confines of one's home were it not for the fact that Don had happened to come across noted paranormal researcher Tony Shields, who was known as Doc to his friends. Doc Shields. Doc Shields. Doc Shields. Legendary Nessie researcher, all sorts of things. He cool. was like a big paranormal. Re- a lot of people think he's a little bit shady there you know there's always there's always shades of uh fascinating researcher bit of a showman but okay. that's oh, that's the background jo- doc shields well look, let's man. not let's not prejudge though everything that's going to happen really? based on that i just wanted to give full disclosure to our audience okay. that this guy is not always regarded as the most reliable motherfucker but right. what don brought to him was not something that doc made up right all right He happened to be in the region investigating sightings of a sea monster dubbed Morgwar. I think it's a whale's word. I'm going to spell it for my people. M-O-R-G-A-W-R. Morgwar. I love reading it. It, It's a a word that has kind of plagued me since I was a child. Is it Morgwar? Right. Well, it'd be, it'd be Morg Gar 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 because it's G A W R. Yeah, but I love. Well, but I, I prefer pronouncing it, it really. Morg-war. Yeah, no, it's awesome. Yeah. So what's, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to digress metal, but... for a brief second. What's interesting about this is that for a spate during the summer, I think of '76, um, scuba divers saw this like Nessie-like creature with. Uh, you know, long neck, a big bulky body, reptilian looking, uh, swimming in the ocean. So not okay. freshwater mm. lake, but like a marine animal. And other people were seeing it from their boats. Like there was a lot of, it was a whole huge flap that was going on in the water about, I don't know, 300 yards away from the hill where the church was, where people were seeing the Ooh, owl man. So we're talking in a very, very concentrated geographical area. Uh, at at, at virtually, not even virtually, literally the same time, you had something flying in the skies that was terrifying people in the woods in the church area up on the hill. And then you could literally just walk down and see a place where people People were seeing seeing from from boats, underwater, maybe even from the land, though, I'm not sure. But it's a fascinating confluence of events. Yeah. And Mm, and that bears mentioning. So that's why Doc Shields was there. All right. He was looking at the sea monster stuff. You got the same area, two monsters. Where was Aleister Crowley? Oh, he was involved. In spirit. It's 76. He was dead. So he was literally involved in spirit. He was there. Oh, shit. While Shields and other monster hunters were scanning the seas just below the medieval church in hopes of seeing this marine monstrosity, the avian anomaly hovering above the ancient church in the surrounding forest was revealed to the veteran paranormalist by the aforementioned Don Melling. Don, ever the protective patriarch when it came to his young daughters, refused to allow the children to be interviewed, but did provide Shields with a sketch of the beast that was drawn by June. And you know what, Mark? You might want to bring up some pictures so you and Chris okay. can see what these are. Yep. It's, it's strange, but don't, don't do it yet. Let me, yeah, let no, me keep I'll, reading. I'll bring it up, though. The drawing clearly showed a humanoid figure with large wings and an owl-like head. The thing bore ominously slanting eyes that the girls claimed were red in color, and this is an excerpt from Shields' journal. This really is a fantastic thing. And I'm sure the man wasn't just making it up because he'd been told that I was on a monster hunt. I couldn't get the kids to talk about it. In fact, the father wouldn't even let me try. But he gave me a sketch of the thing drawn by June. He goes on to say, There have been no reports so far as I know of anybody else seeing the Birdman, which is what it was called originally. Even if it turned out to be just... This is fucking hilarious. Even if it turned out to be just just a fancy dress hang glider, a fucking fancy dress hang glider? Like someone ha- like on a hang glider with a really awesome sense of fashion, like, oh, look at me in the sky. I'm the, is that I'm what the that giant is, really? owl. Yeah, yeah. It's so absurd. I, I, I don't know what that means. I mean, it's kind of cool, though. It is, but it's just... Like, if your hobby's hang gliding, like, you kind of got to be, like, aware of what you're wearing. I would yeah, be. I have my favorite band. Or did they just mean the hang? No, the hang glider looks like a thing. I'm not not that they're they're dressed like an owl oh, no. on a hang glider. It yeah, is, no, I'm, or I'm, is I'm that, thinking of like the actual uh, person me, in the glider. Let me quote again. All right, a <laughs> fancy dress hang glider. So Shields wasn't just proposing it was a hang glider that two little girls just thought it looks like a giant fucking owl. 
they thought it was he he considered it to be a costumed hang glider. That is just like right. we come up with as many skeptical, realistic options as we can right. when we're doing this. That to me is just super asinine. I mean, when I if and when I get my hang glider, I'm gonna look fucking fancy, like an owl. See, owl fancy. It's gonna be like a, I'm gonna look like a fucking Elvis impersonator. Wow. <laughs> on a fucking hang glider. Like who's that fat guy out there in a hang glider? You oh, are it's not Marf. fat. <laughs> <sighs> Even if it turned out to be just a fancy dress hang glider, you'd think someone else would have spotted him. But Ma- but Monon is not a place for hang gliding. Fine. Okay. I mean, okay, yeah. I mean, I'm going to just assume he knows the landscape. I guess any place with wind and the blast well, to jump gotta off be of. pretty high, though, I think, for that. You can't, yeah, I mean, if there's just like a. requisites for like hang gliding? That I don't know. Like m- more than a, a hill? I think a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a like, cliff and a, a breeze. Cliff? A cliff and a breeze. It's got to be pretty, pretty but high. Like, how much I, of a br- like? I, I went like I went like parasailing, which is not hang gliding. No, I'm but you had a boat. That yeah, but you have something pulling. pulling with yeah, air. yeah. So like, if I get a hang glider, right, yeah. and I go out in Chris's backyard here, yeah, on um, um, the place that it's the, not for like the a kite. You can't just run and jump. Yeah, yeah, I hope to, you don't yeah, think no, that's no, how it works. But I'm saying if I'm on top. On top of what? Of the the place that for for the local children like, over there and, and no, the side. No, 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 much higher. If the wi- okay, so wait, what's the height? What's it gotta be? Like, like fucking what? high. You're a human being. Do you gotta raise do like a, a human Pink being Floyd weight? off the top of a fucking mountain? Is that I, you every do? time I've ever seen hang gliding in a movie, it There's is somebody running high. off a fucking cliff that is way high up. You gotta give the wind a chance to really get under you to support your shit. Okay, you, this is not like I'm, so we, I'm on the roof of a yeah, fucking I ranch know, house and I'm mean. going. It's not like. <laughs> You That's can, not how that shit works. Jump off a two-story building and be like, "I'm doing it." No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think you, I think you're gonna go right right down. Uh, okay, so we don't understand hang gliding. No, okay, but we good. understand it enough to know that we need to be lofty. Okay. Right. Okay. But what we do know is Doc Shields knows Monon is no place to hang glide. Okay. Not at all. Awesome. I really don't know what to think. He goes on to say, "It's as if a whole load of weirdness has been let loose in Fallmouth, and the Fallmouth, which is another name. So it's Cornwall. Oh, jeez. Uh, like I don't know if that's the county or what. Manigal. Kiernan could tell us. So it's Cornwall, Monon, and the Fallmouth area, and we're all. And I think we're I just see, getting okay. smaller and smaller at the same okay. location. All right. Okay. It's as if a whole load of weirdness has been let loose in the Fallmouth area since last autumn." According to author and cryptozoologist Jonathan Downs, some of the weirdness that Shields was referring to included droughts, floods, heat waves, and hordes of feral cats attacking women, which is fucking weird no, and that's, scary. Yeah, I don't. That's flocks of birds committing suicide against the walls of local homes, UFOs. <laughs> oh, suicidal because, birds is fun. Because I looked at Chris, <laughs> and Chris did a double take to no one. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 was, I was like, <laughs> was right. He's like, what did he just say? Oh, Sorry. oh the, the old biblical trope of yeah. birds. <laughs> yeah, all right. So suicidal birds. So, yeah. suicidal birds. So we have UFOs, then, okay. suicidal birds, feral cats attacking, it seems, women exclusively. Okay. The, oh, less, Jesus. the less weird aspects of heat waves, floods, and droughts. Well, I guess droughts and heat waves go together like... You know, ham and cheese. Yeah, I mean, but happens, I don't know where yeah. the flood falls in. But well, now, whatever. We have one more that we have to end on. And here. this is the most interesting one, as I say. Most intriguingly, claims of teleporting cows. The teleporting bovine. What do you mean? Like, Which I have of not their found. Own any... Well, I don't know. <laughs> like... do, they, do they wish themselves to a new place? Are they fucking? <laughs> They're just like, well, you know, I don't feel like walking. <laughs> Moo. Uh, <laughs> Somewhere a little portal. <laughs> they show up like. The fuck did he do that? Like, uh, like fucking bovine night crawlers and uh, a black puff of smoke. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. And the other fucking pastor. All right, so what, what, pasture, pasture, what, what are you trying to say here is that uh, is that there's some weird shit going on in the area? Uh, yeah, teleporting cows really take it. I mean, I, you birds know what? committing suicide. Uh, feral I, I want that report more than anything else. The teleporting cow. I need witnesses. I need to know how. What it is that yeah. story? Was there a this, puff of smoke? Like, this what would the deal? be a phenomenal movie. If oh, you're totally. just teleporting about, cow, like if you, if I guess the maybe, curse of the teleporting if, cow. Exactly, you get Matt Damon to play Moo. Doc Shields, and he's like, "Oh, there's <laughs> a sea monster. <laughs> oh, there's a fucking owl man. Oh, cows are fucking appearing and disappearing at will." And then he's standing outside talking Jennifer to some farmer. Jennifer Gardner gets attacked by a pack of feral cats. She yes, yeah, she's his cohort. I love Jennifer Gardner. She's the best. Birds beating on buildings. Yeah, yeah Jennifer Gardner is brilliant. Birds dying left and right. Well, I'm not really. I'm not savoring that as much as you, but yeah. Sure, that's part of the plot. I mean, I mean, you're getting off on it if a bird harder you know, than I want. I'm, I'm, a, I'm over that. If yeah, a bird too. flies and into movies. a wall, you're, you're assuming it's suicide. No, 
birds accidentally fly into windows and not walls, but windows all the time and yeah. die. But I'm thinking like Hitchcock's the birds like yeah, like they're just oh, bashing like like, oh, like a whole okay. flock of these fuckers just pounding on a wall, right. and you're just like the fuck yeah. Okay. Of course, it could have been like three. It could have been. It, yeah, could but have I been prefer two. to think you, you it think it's be a, yeah. the most okay. extreme weird shit yeah. possible. Eight flocks of seagulls. Eight flocks. Yeah, no less than one hundred twenty nine thousand birds died that day. That's true. Exactly. It was That's just literally a give mountain of dead birds that you could can glide off the top of. It was that high. Well, it was that high. Yeah. Yeah. Had I, that many. You know what? I saw it on Reddit. Oh my God! Continue, Robert. On July third, nineteen seventy six, fourteen year old Sally Chapman, who hailed from Plymouth, key background information. Nice. Cool. was camping with her friend Barbara Perry in the in the very same woods where Vicky and June had made their sighting just three months earlier. This time, however, the young eyewitnesses would not be so far removed from this appalling entity. According to Chapman's account, when she and Perry climbed out of their tent, they heard a horrible hissing noise. The teenagers whipped around and were confronted by a sight that would haunt them for the rest of their lives. Chapman described the unforgettable vision. It was like a big owl with pointed ears, as big as a man. The eyes were red and glowing. At first I thought it was someone dressed up playing a joke, trying to scare us. I laughed at it. Bad call. Real yeah, bad don't, call. Don't Do laugh. not laugh don't at the laugh. apparition. No. no, not in an owlman. Jesus no. Christ. You know how sensitive they are. Mad. I laughed at it. Both of us did. Then it went up in the air and we both screamed. When it went up, we could see its feet were like pinchers. Mm. So uh, this is a fucking crazy kid. Like two teenage girls, you know, life is fun. Everything's in front of you. You know, you're just burgeoning with youth and excitement and, and independently camping and hanging out and doing girl talk or whatever. You get out of this tent, you hear a hiss, a horrible hiss. This thing yeah, hiss. looks like, I guess, a guy in a fucking weird bird costume. And you start laughing because this is that's the key to me. It's not like they Kinda were weird, instantly though. terrified, but then it shoots up through the trees and that's when shit gets real. All laughter stops. It's funny. You don't get a lot of mm. um, flapping wing comments on this. It's almost right. like this thing is very Mothman like, and I'm sure all of our listeners have made this connection. Well, yeah, it already it, has it, the, the red eyes. Red eyes, yeah. Yeah. semi humanoid, yeah, flying. In fact, you could almost say that it could be almost identical, except the people in Cornwall made the allusion to an owl, where the people right. in Point Pleasant made the allusion to a moth. Yeah. There's some key differences. One of them being that it does not seem to be a prophet of doom, the well, Owlman well, yeah, that is. Yeah. But one of the key comparisons is, just like Point Pleasant during the 60s when John Keel was investigating everything going on, you had injured cold, you had poltergeist activity, you had Mothman. It was a cavalcade of fucking weird. Right. It seems it's like Cornwall there too, is yeah. a cavalcade of fucking weird. Yeah. yeah. Right. So it's interesting, but I mean, it's, it's how far you want to interpret it right. in terms of association. Okay. Perry, her friend Barbara Perry, contributed her thoughts about the beast. It was horrible. A nasty owl face. A nasty owl face with big ears and red eyes. It was covered with gray feathers. The claws on its feet were black. It just flew up and disappeared in the trees. The girls, aware of Shields' involvement in the Melling Sisters sighting, which I think had been published in a newspaper at that point, immediately contacted Doc to report their run-in with the soaring humanoid. Skeptical, yet eager to discover whether this was a valid sighting or merely teenage pranksters hoping to gain some notoriety, Shields met Chapman and Perry the following day on Grebe Beach. I think I'm saying it right. G-R-E-B-E. Grebe Beach, for Grebe. lack of a better one. Which is located just below Monon Church. On the beach, Chapman anxiously approached the veteran investigator, uttering the words, Are you Doc Shields? We've seen the bird monster. The girls were both adamant that they were not falsifying this report. Chapman elaborated on her description of the creature and expressed her concern over people not believing their strange story and described the creature in even more detail. And this is what she said. It has red slanting eyes and a very large mouth. The feathers are silvery gray and so are his body and legs. The feet are like a big black crab's claws. We were frightened at the time. It was so strange, like something out of a horror film. After the thing went up, there were crackling sounds in the treetops for ages. So, interesting point. The no crab, beak. Yep. No beak. No. Just a big fucking maw. The big crab mouth. claw yeah. feet are interesting. Yeah, I think so too. That's, That's really weird. weird. But the weird yeah. thing is... How do you function with those? Well, that, that doesn't seem entirely off. Like, if you're like... Well... 
I, I, no, matter, no matter which way they're placed, two of them is not very no, it's not sustainable. Enough. Yeah, not, Do, not I mean, at all. is it going? Is it going horizontal on the branch and pinching either side? It would almost have. That to. would make sense. Yeah. But then how do you land? But that's not bird-like. That's no, not like a not fucking talon. No, it's not, not like not a foot of a... It's not a hoof. It's not... No. It's, it's unique. It's never seen it on It seems completely unusable. Things. Yeah. Yeah. But then again, they said they... Whatever one said that they were black. Right. Well, yeah. so they... Might be so, I mean, so if, chance, was if, if it has yeah. four, and you, you just see that maybe the two on the sides, and you kind of don't... You're not going to see the back. Right. One. Right. You make a valid point. Yeah. So she, even she from one actually, from the front, you might probably... Yeah. If she you, didn't give this thing a pedicure... And yeah. go, oh, you, you have crab like crab, crab claw like feet. So <laughs> they very well could be, yeah, totally not. Very true. Part of it. So Chapman went on to say, "Our mother thinks we made it all up just because we read about these things, but that is not true. We really saw the Birdman, though it could have been someone playing a trick in a very good costume and makeup. But how could it rise up like that? If we imagined it, then we both imagined it at the same time." And I like that she says that. She's like, yeah, maybe it was somebody in a great costume, but how the fuck could they pull this off? So their mom thinks that they made it up because they've been reading about it? I f- well, the, the the report of the first two girls, yeah. the, the oh, Melling sisters. Okay, gotcha, yeah, it's gotcha. not, it's out there. Yeah. Right, so it's so, kind of in the, okay, all it's right. a, Yeah, it's in the public, right. you know, ether. Okay. People yeah. are, are seeing it. So, and back then, you know, it seems to be a hallmark of paranormal stories that parents did not believe their kids when they saw something. Yeah, of course and not. And you hear that over and over again. It's like, I think maybe generations have changed. Like parents tend to listen to their kids more. Yeah. But back then it was like, fuck, fuck yeah. you, you're grounded. Well, Sixteen duh. weeks, home, go. Sixteen weeks, Jesus. Shields, admittedly skeptical about the girl's story, had Chapman and Perry draw what they had seen separately. Upon inspection, he considered the images to be similar enough to verify their story, yet different enough to rule out a conspiracy to commit a hoax. He determined the illustrations to be significant pieces of evidence. I believe I have the well, illustrations right here. Yes, right. These ones we're talking now, about now right these here. These are the ones. Let's. These are the ones by different people. So let's see. The top one is by June Melling. Okay. The middle one is by Barbara Perry, and the bottom one is by Sally Chapman. So the bottom two ones are right. the ones done by the the two 14 year old girls who are camping. Yeah. Right. And the first one was done by one of the Melling sisters. Okay. And now we can. Move cool. forward and check I mean, it out. Yeah, those are actually those are. It's creepy. Sally's but, my favorite, but not Sally's fucking got my favorite. Oh, she's the best artist. Yeah, no, she's got but it's not great. aerodynamic at fucking all. And those wings could not possibly, unless they, they were the most hollow bones and well, this thing had yeah, like zero percent yeah, body problem fat. Problem with that. Well, the problem. It's a problem with it in terms of physics. It's a problem well, with yeah, it in yeah, terms of yeah. There's a lot of problems know, with that one. Aviation engineering. But not, but honestly, but not if it's a supernatural entity akin to what the Mothman. Well, is like you probably. mentioned, that there's no mention of flapping of wings. This thing is no, apparently it just shoots right up a lot of times. Jet propelled. So with, he sands the jet. I think we can all agree yeah. before we even get to the end of these accounts that this is not a cryptozoological phenomenon, because an animal just couldn't do what this was described to be doing with a body mass as was drawn by multiple eyewitnesses, right. wings. Of much too small a size. It's not like a fucking Thunderbird. It's just right. standard wings that would be, like, if the wings touched their thighs, they would maybe be knee length. Okay, so out of the gate, we're going to take cryptozoolo- cryptozoology I, off I'm the table. I'm going to, definitely. Are we going to go to demon land? Well, it hangs out in the church. We'll save that for the okay. end. Well, it's funny because right. the, the, the picture on the bottom just looks like a fucking owl. Yeah. Sort of, yeah. It does. It looks like an owl. The other one, I mean, even the legs with, aren't with crab, long enough with to be crab claws, yeah. like a person. They look like they're just slightly longer bird legs, but it looks like an owl. You know what I mean? The other ones look like a person. Yes, I with, agree. With, the other two are much more humanoid. With, yeah, with like wings. It, These are kind of great illustrations. Oh, actually. I love them. Like they're so, like the first one here, like, just the face. Yeah. And, and it's, it's and, so and, cool. and that's the thing about its maw. It's triangular. It's it's always, a, they always describe it as the, the mouth as being a, yeah. a fucking triangle and glowing red eyes. I mean, yes, we talk about eye shine. We talk about this and that. Right. Yeah. And maybe if they flashed a flashlight at it, but yeah. though there's no mention of that. Maybe they saw it. But independently, yeah. both sets of witnesses said that the eyes were glowing. Yeah. Independently red, which is something like uh, the Bruja of Rubio, which is, again, obviously a paranormal story. Yeah. I mean, that the witch's eyes and she was a half bird glowed red. Even when she was in just tattered witch form, so yes. it's a, it's a pretty standard uh, description of paranormal flying things. Okay, so maybe we're going to be going paranormal here with this. We'll see. It's a possibility. Okay, 
Both girls made brief notes beneath their pictures, the ones we were just looking at. Chapman's read, I saw this monster bird last night. It stood like a man and then flew up through the trees. It's as big as a man. Its eyes are red and shine brightly. So again, I agree that one of the drawings looks owl-like. And there's a lot of people that think they just saw a huge barn-type owl or some other species of owl and just misinterpreted it. But as big as a man, especially the length of the legs, those are the and the and the glowing red eyes. Those are things. I that think it's kind of hard to biological to look at a barn but, owl and then for them to say it's the size of a man, but they actually misinterpreted a barn owl is a huge leap. I would think so too. Because I've seen plenty of barn owls. We all have. They're, yeah. I mean, they're big, but they're not the size of Chris or I or you. No. You know. So they're. No. It's kind. Of, no. I know. Not to say that. Listen. Yeah. Not to say that. Untrained eyes have a perfect perception of scale from a distance. I mean, we have to acknowledge they're like what we had a a nine, a 12 year old girl, and I think two 14 year old girls. Now, I'm not throwing the bus. By the time you're 14, you've got your cognitive shit together. I mean, you don't have your experiential shit together, but you can at least observe things. But it's not like they're trained to scale. So we, I, I will be a little skeptically cautious in that their speculations of. Of, of height might be a little off, but saying something is man size still seems considerably larger than your I mean, standard they all fucking are saying owl. That, that this thing has wings and it has the legs of a man. And, so, the, and the pictures of a crab. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. the mouth of a fucking monster because yeah. nothing but, has but it. But like a picture, like, like I said, this out, this one doesn't look like legs of a man. It just looks like a it fucking looks, bird like all the way owl. through. Feathers everywhere. Yeah. Doesn't look like man legs. Like, the like thing, these two. The other two. Now, what, the first one is from one of the first eyewitnesses. Yeah, yeah. I think it's right. Judy Melling, right? Yeah. The second one is um, Barbara Perry. Yeah. Now, it's funny. These two separate eyewitnesses drew things extremely similar. Yeah, those are close. wings, human bodies. Mm -hmm. It seems as if, and Chapman is the final one at the bottom, right? Yeah. And we will post this so people can see. Chapman is totally different. It seems like she's a girl with a little more talent who is embellishing. Like, I feel like the first two are, it's funny that they're eyewitnesses separated by both, you know, time and, and space and the whole nine yards they and i don't think there's any indication that they knew each other they draw virtually identical weird humanoid owl-like man monster with mm-hmm. with shitbag wings chapman draws this fancy super feathered yeah thing i i i'm inclined to was think she that she was just showing it? off her skills or, or was she close maybe to it and she got more but detail. these wings are more look at all the like they spent all the time to get everything in those wings yeah, they actually. Those, those, that's odd, isn't that, are, that's oddly boxy. Like, like I think that's Barbara yeah, wait, no, Perry's drawing. I, the wings on that are. It is. It's like a kite. It's boxy yeah, as fuck. Well, all the wings. None of these make like. If you had those wings, you p- could possibly take off if you had hollow. Yeah. I mean, those are just the wings are twice as big as the body on that first one. Right. Right. So I even, guess, these, even these wings are well, what, what pretty big. What with, with the drawings of children? Exactly. So, I was about to say the same yeah. thing. We have to kind of take this with a grain of salt. I think the similarities and the fact that they seem unique to any fauna, avian mm-hmm. or otherwise, that live in the area is what we really need to take to to right. the bank. And and I'm not saying just take the stuff we want and leave behind the stuff we don't. But there's of course going to be some, you know, differences yeah, and totally, weirdness. Totally. And it's funny they all have the kind of owl-like horns. But look at the middle picture by uh, Perry. That's weird. It, you see the bottom of ears there, and it's right. got a conical head. Anyway, we have really interesting eyewitness drawings, and Shields was presented with that. I kind of want to get those tattooed on me, actually. They'd be pretty fun. Hey, that's yeah. awesome. But not like touched up and to make to look like I want to look like a child's drawing. No, I, you know, like so people are like, oh, your children did that, and you did tattooed. I'm like, no, this is the original sketch from the Almond. Do you not understand Cornwall. this extremely significant <laughs> moment in the yeah, history of, of cryptozoology, cryptozoology, and the paranormal? How dare you, good sir? Shameful. Read a book. Shame. Yeah. God damn it. Yeah. Get on the internet. Look at Wikipedia. Ha. So just as Chapman made notes, Barbara Perry also made notes on mm. the drawing, which said, Birdman monster, period. Seen on 3rd of July, period. It's like a fucking, yeah. it's like a, a telegraph fucking. Yeah, did it, did it. Did it, did it, did it. She's, she's making good notes. Yeah, no, she's, yeah. She, you know what? Just the facts. Yeah. She's not right. fucking around with embellishment. No. She's like, I'm telling you as it is. So 3rd of July, quite late at night, but not quite dark. Red eyes, black mouth. It was very big with great big wings and black claws, feathers gray. Okay, so that's what so she she's got. Great right. big wings you know what is she a did? nice touch. She cut the shit and got to the point. Oh, yeah. You got to give her mad props for that. Boom. She probably ended up being a constable. 
More than likely. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. The two girls agreed on most features with their pictures, although Chapman believed that Perry had failed to accurately represent the monster's wings. Based on these drawings, Shields would give his monster its permanent designation of Owl Man. So that's how it became the Owl Man, not the bird monster of yeah. Cornwall. The People kept man. saying bird, 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 but once he saw these pointy ear things, he was like, oh yeah. That's an owl. That's an owl. Man. Well, especially that third one. That's... Just, that's that's Dead an owl. owl. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting to note that Chapman describes the creature as not only being approximately the su- the same size as a human, but as standing like a man. This would seem to indicate that this was not merely a large eagle owl, as some have speculated, but an actual humanoid entity. So, like, you know, great cryptozoologists like Dr. Carl Schuker and others have said, maybe this was just a large eagle owl, la, la, la. And I totally respect the work, and it's it's a valid point of view yeah but they aren't fucking humanoid so i at least i keep my mind open i don't instantly just glom onto the first uh zoological explanation that comes down the pike perry's account of a black mouth would likewise seem to point toward the fact that this beast is not beaked but bears what one can only uh, assumed to be a gaping maw, as we were talking before, which is just weird. A big triangular open mouth. That's just kind of haunting. Uh, Unless, of yeah, course, I mean, I mean let it, me, but let it's me, dark. Let me throw, let like, me throw as I, I like know, to say, a monkey just... dick in the works. <laughs> oh, the old monkey dick. The old dick. monkey dick. Yeah. If it's far enough away and it's black, they, it could have been, you know, just a modestly sized black beak. Well, that's what I'm just saying. Yeah. They would, they would be able to see. Absolutely. Yeah. That's the first thing so, that came to my mind. Like, I know. Me if too. it's just the markings were dark, you're gonna, it's going to look like a mouth. It's not that I want to believe it. Yeah. I'm just saying it's but a possibility. If, if you see, generally, if you see anything in the dark, are you going to be able to make out a mouth of almost anything? Well, they both said it was like, it was getting dark, but not very dark. Okay, so it was kind of like, like well, twilight or whatever. You would think the illuminated red eyes would shine enough on the face so you would see if it was a beak right. or not, but... Yeah. Who right. the fuck knows? Yeah. Who the fuck knows? Well... The very next day, on July 4th, 1976, and can I digress for a moment here? I remember being in uh, England in 1990 uh, during the summer, and I happened Mm -hmm. to be there for July 4th. And like the idiot 17-year-old I was, uh, someone like said, oh... Oh, happy, happy 4th of July to you. You know, Uh the wonderful British woman that I happened to be staying with at the time. And I said, hey, same to you. And she just kind of clucked at me and shook her head and said, oh, no, you won the war. Mm. And I got a wow. fucking huge kick out of it. She was so wow. awesome and so dry. And I wish I could do a British accent wow. to do it justice. But yeah, that's what happens when uh, you wish somebody a happy Christ. fourth in, in Great Britain. Wow. All right. There you go. But I digress. The very <laughs> next day on July 4th, 1976, a young lady named Jane Greenwood. That's a fucking Austin name. Yeah, I know. That that's that's an Emily Dickinson fucking character right there. Also claimed to have encountered the creature in the vicinity of Monon Church. Greenwood described the beast as being as large as a man with a wide mouth. All right, so a little closer and a mouth thing. Slanted red eyes and huge black crab-like claws. So this so is, this is a, now the fourth corroborating witness. Of and a woman, these, again. Okay. The same year, author Anthony Monon Peller, I don't know why his name Monon. is the same as this uh, location, maybe his old blood, published a pamphlet entitled Morgwar, The Monster of Falmouth Bay which included one of the first written accounts of the Owl Man. Following the release of this leaflet, or as suggested by many skeptics because of it, sightings of this quasi-humanoid strigiform arose with alarming frequency, after which the eyewitness reports and the public furor seemed to abruptly die down. Um, strigiform being a nocturnal predatorial bird. Mm. Thank you. I was going to say, I'm dumb. What's you're a strigiform? No, you're not. I'm just not. Never once ever heard the word strigiform. Well, hang out with the right people and you never know what will yeah, happen. It's, it's going to be a fucking crazy strigiform, dude. <laughs> you don't want, yeah, you don't want right, wants to deal with the crazy strigiform. Fuck yeah, dude. You're generally not going to use that word in, in no. normal conversation. No. Okay, never. So what they're saying I mean, here unless is Unless you're hanging out with ornithologists. What they're saying here is that this pamphlet was published and this is what sparked people seeing this? Well, skeptics suggest that the uptick in sightings was, because was as a result of this, like, like a little zine of Monster Man, which, by the way, I would love to get my hands actually on. actually kind of cool, because yeah, this is back when people were like, oh, we've published the leaflet, yes. and then they give it to you, and you're like, <laughs> yeah. oh, cool, 
I think it's almost like with comic books, more like ash cans. Absolutely, you yeah. Get like, Fuck you yeah. Get like a little tiny ash can. You're like, oh, and it's so cool. Yeah, that's wicked. We should make leaflets. Absolutely. I know we should. We have other things that we're I know, selling right I know. now. I know. Fucking. Yeah. We're trying to sell other One shit. I know. We there's so much we want to do. There's so much shit we yeah. get excited about, but then we're like. We're three guys with a limited budget and only so much time in our lives. We got a little merch thing together on Big Cartel. Check the description of the podcast. Click the link. Order yourself something. Robert, take it away. After the Fuhrer died down, not the Fuhrer, the Fuhrer. <laughs> Just wanted to be very clear. After the yeah, Fuhrer died. We'll cut that out. Those are two separate things. Yeah, well, it's not a false statement. No, it's no, not. It's true. It's, it's actually true. It's true. He, he was dead. After it died down. Okay, good. <laughs> It picked up again. <laughs> uh, you fucking asshole. Fucking really? really? <laughs> you, you did not write that. Uh, you did no, you really didn't. write that? No, I didn't write okay, that. Okay, okay. But it's really what happened. You really that droid, like, after the fear of down. Uh, down. Uh, hey, guess what, lads? <laughs> it picked up again. <laughs> no. Guess what, boys? It happened again. All right, Robert, let me happened? Let me read what I actually wrote. <laughs> this, that was it was good. That was awesome. I love it. <laughs> right. The dining would come to an abrupt stop, or would continue until. No, I don't know. What the what? fuck is the dining? The dining. Is the it... dining of the sightings. The t- what the fuck's the dining? The dining of the light. Is that what Highlanders do? Are they dining? Yes. Like, it's when you eat and die. <laughs> 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 Really? Wow. No, I'm mean, fucking I'm pulling I'm, shit out of my ass. Why do you do this to me? I'm why? Sorry. That would be until 1978 when a young lady known only as Miss Opie saw what she described as a monster like the devil flying up through the trees near the old Monon church. A few days following Miss Opie's sighting, Shields wrote a letter to renowned paranormal investigators and founders of the Fortean Picture Library. Oh, jeez. Wow. Janet and Colin Board. That sounds cool as shit. Yeah, I got oh, a lot of their books. They're really cool. Do you cool. really? They're yes, a married BL. couple. Is, a it, lot still, of cool is shit. it still open? Can we go? I, well, I think they're still alive, Can but I, I, well, it sounds like it's a place you go so much as if you need p- oh. pictures of monsters or oh, whatever. I thought it was like can, an actual it, like, No, like, it's building. a virtual library. I mean, it, it might have once like been a, a corporeal literal place you go to look. Is it like an angel fire site now? I like Geo Cities or something. A, I don't know if it's a website. I think it's actually like Getty or something where you have to oh, pay for some shit. Okay. All I right. really don't know how it I works. I was excited that it was a home that we can go visit together as three friends Honestly, in the English countryside. I know they live together oh, probably yeah. in the English countryside. And if we made uh, advance engagement plans, they might be generous enough to let us into their home and look at their collection. Okay, cool. So maybe we'll put that on the summer to do list. <laughs> Along with other merch that we're going to make. <laughs> So anyway, these paranormal investigators, <coughs> Janet and Colin Board, uh, received a letter from Shields detailing his hope to provide photographic proof of the skybound critter. He went on to claim, the owl man is certainly back in business. You know, it died down for a while. I think we mentioned that. <laughs> the owl man is certainly back in certainly. business. As soon as anything really exciting happens, I'll let you know. It would be terrific if I could get a picture of our feathered friend. But he only seems to pop up for young girls, dot, 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 and I ain't one. Oh. Doc, you know wow. your gender. Wow. There you go, Doc. Bless your heart. So, okay. So, they, I mean. They just saw a thing. Is there a further description of it? Uh, well, now it's, now it's I'm just confused. A, uh, me, me, the, uh, Miss Opie? A devil. Yeah. Uh, she says, and I quote, uh, uh, Miss Opie saw what she described as a Monster like a devil flying yeah. up through the trees near the old Manon Church. Manon. Manon Church. That, right. So Is there more than that description? That's it. That's it. Okay. It's so that, that could be tight. dubious, possibly. Well, just because well, something... Sh- no, listen. Something, possible dubious. That's no. Batman. Let's move along. <laughs> exactly. Well, that's true. So quick. Oh, that's Gotham by but, Gaslight. But in all fairness, brevity, and Gaslight's a good term, brevity is not necessarily indi- indicative of a lack of veracity. So just because her sighting was of a monster like a devil in the trees right, by the right, church, right, right, right. And, and she doesn't specifically describe its owl-like features, doesn't mean it's not accurate, and it doesn't necessarily mean it was the owl man either. But I you think know, it's I'm, a pretty yeah. good assumptive I'm, I'm leap. Not, I'm not saying the description's inaccurate. I'm just saying you sound like they look like a devil it could be up somewhere in yeah. a church. Well, it could literally, like be, a, it could literally like be a vulture. Horns could maybe look like demonic horns, depending on... Maybe. What level she of, doesn't have the level well, no, of fear you have well, of demons. Well, those owls have pretty big fucking horns. But she doesn't have the same description as owls, everybody but. else, though. Well, she doesn't not have it. It's just so goddamn vague. We don't know. Right. A monster like a devil. That's it. 
Yeah, that is. Yeah, that's. Yeah, that's okay. There's so not a lot to go there. It could represent an It could represent a Jersey Devil. Batman. Fuck all. Uh, could be a Batman. Could be, Batman. Batman. Could be a yep. turkey. Could be a fucking turkey in the trees. It could be. Turkeys do that shit all the time. Yeah, but I don't well, think they. Facts. I don't think yeah. they look. Facts like, they don't look like devils. They could, to a certain person. They. they, they Afraid could. of the devil. Everything looks like the devil. <laughs> the eagle, devil turkey. Yeah. Oh. The owl man. Was seen again. Okay. I'm just going to put a kibosh on this. The Owl Man was seen again on August 2nd, 1978, by three unidentified female French students who were attending nearby Camborne Tech. Okay. I don't know what Camborne Tech does, but I'm real intrigued. Yeah, what? Is it like a preparatory school know. or something? It, like, is it? Well, it's a. A uh, university? Maybe. Right. I don't know. If you go there, let us know what you guys What I do, do know, if you go there looking for Camborne Tech, you will be disappointed because it is now known as Cornwall College. Oh, cool. Congratulations on the renaming. Yeah. All right. So oh. these three uh, anonymous French students were there for summer courses. Okay, cool. The landlady of the Red Ruth boarding house in which the students were residing had contacted Shields who she knew to be involved in unusual encounters, in order to report that her tenants had been terrified by something they claimed was, and this is a quote, very big, like a big furry bird with a gaping mouth and round eyes. Not slanting eyes at this point. Eyes. But then again, we can scowl and our eyes look slanty. We right. can open our eyes and they look round. I mean, okay. it's, but it's still a distinction that's worth mentioning. The girls, like so many who have had a sighting of an anomalous entity, refuse to come forward and subject themselves to the ridicule or media scrutiny that often follows an admitted encounter with the unknown. I don't blame them. Hmm. Honestly. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I, totally. I, I'm so proud of everyone that does come forward. I'm so glad, especially when we get a chance to talk to them or at least read their accounts. But honestly... People that don't come forward and don't want that raft of shit, I don't blame them. I really don't. According to Downs, Jonathan Downs, the aforementioned author and cryptozoologist, there were many investigators, such as the late Mark Chorvinsky, which to throw back was the source of the Bremerton monstrosity that we discussed in the Monday two-bagger, who have questioned Shields' reliability in this case due to the fact that so many of the eyewitnesses came forward exclusively to him. So Downs and Chorvinsky and others have said, why are they all just talking to Doc Shields? On the other hand, he's the guy that's in all the newspaper articles. He is the monster right. investigator. So you would think, if I don't know where to report these things, because there's not like an Owl Man reporting center somewhere in fucking yeah. Cornwall, well. you would probably just keep reporting them to the guy that is investigating. And now, it wasn't the, well, one of the first sightings the guy would not let his daughters talk to him? Yes. Because he was too protective? He was like, you can't talk to the man. He gave, he gave, talk he gave him the account and the right. drawing, and that's okay. it. But not actually from the girls. Passed, it was passed through their father. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. This is sounding a little suspicious. Well, definitely. We have, to, we have to be skeptical. Downs, however, has suggested that this is due, and this being the fact that Shields got all the reporting, this is due to the fact that the Cornish folks are notoriously reticent to allow outsiders in on their potentially embarrassing secrets. And that if Shields had not been considered a trusted local, this entire phenomenon may well have gone unreported. So his assumption is, as before mentioned, they trust him, they're delivering right. it. Ooh. Downs also reported the first account of the creature that did not involve Shields. According to the report, Downs interviewed a man, that's a key factor, referred to only as Gavin, who along with his former girlfriend Sally claimed to have seen the beast in the flesh in 1989. Which is like a decade jump yeah. from the last sighting. Yeah. Gavin described the incident, and this is what he said. We had a torch, flashlight for us Americans, yep. and I was shining its beam across trunks about 15 feet off the ground. We saw the animal at about 9.30 p.m. It was standing on a thick branch with its wings sort of held up at, an, at the arms, at the arm level, so basically, I guess, horizontal to the body. Mm -hmm. I'd say that it was about five feet tall. The legs had ankles, and the feet were large and black with two huge toes on the visible side. That's pointing out what Chris well, said. So Chris is He's yeah, indicating. So they're was. in the front, so maybe there was something in the back. Okay. The creature was gray with brown, and the eyes definitely glowed. That's interesting. Another glowing eye thing. On seeing us, its head jerked down and forward. Its wings lifted up, and it just jumped backwards. As it did, its legs folded up. We ran away. We had a pretty good idea what it looked like. We did not know what to do about it, and essentially vowed never to tell anyone. I last saw Sally about two years ago and talked about it then. She was as unkeen to share the information then as she was earlier, and I promised I wouldn't tell anyone about her involvement, you know, except her first fucking name. 
but I could do what I liked with my interpretation. I respect this and have never disclosed any information about her. Okay, well, he did disclose information about her. Yeah, but, yeah <coughs> he's a little bit of a hypocrite. Gavin is apparently... I think he's trying to be a man of his word. He just doesn't get... If I'm referring to, just like, doesn't get what he's to doing. my girlfriends and I'm using like you know like their first name, you're going to be like, oh, I remember when Mark dated her. Yeah, or if you're a guy yeah. and you dated somebody d- two years ago, everyone who knows you knows who you fucking they dated know two years ago. Even yeah. if Sally is a fucking pseudonym, yeah. they all know it's Nancy and you fucking dated her and you went to fucking Cornwall and Jesus fucking Christ. Okay, so Stop he, outing he, Sally. Yeah, he's not the best with confidentiality, yeah. I guess. But he so might be a good eyewitness shit. otherwise. It's interesting what? though because that does line up with yeah. the other sightings. Some, it does. some it does. of it does. Some, some of it, yeah. The important parts do. The most recent sighting, or at least the most recent known sighting of this beast, occurred just outside of the same Monon church in the summer of 1995. The witness, a student from Chicago who requested that she remain anonymous, back to women, chronicled the incident in a letter she sent to the night editor of the Western Morning News in Truro, Cornwall. This editor was a man named Simon Parker. Hmm. This is what she wrote. Dear Sir, I am a student of marine biology at the Field Museum, Chicago. On the last day of a summer vacation in England, last Sunday evening, I had the most unique and frightening experience in the wooded area near the old church at Monon, Cornwall. I experienced what I can only describe as a vision from hell. The time, yeah, I know, it's heavy. The time was 15 minutes after nine, more or less, and I was walking along a narrow track through the trees. I was halted in my tracks when, about 30 meters ahead, I saw a monstrous man bird thing. It was the size of a man with a ghastly face, a wide mouth, glowing eyes, and pointed ears. It had huge clawed wings. That's a new twist. Claws on the wings. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's sort of reflected pictures. in one of the drawings. Yeah, yeah, absolutely yeah, totally is. Totally was it pictures. Chapman's drawing that had so, it? Yeah, I think so, was, too. Yeah. That's interesting. It had huge clawed wings and was covered in feathers of silver gray color. Still consistent. The thing had long bird legs, which terminated in large black claws. It saw me and arose, floating towards me. Oh, <laughs> so this thing does not use its wings at all. It is a hang <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we fucked up. Oh, we did. <laughs> Somebody oh. made an owl hang glider. Oh, That's Doc it. Shields, you know nothing Dude. of hang gliding environments. I don't want to be the guy to bring this up because I know that it might be a source of fucking will of one of us. Uh, Are we possibly dealing with a blimp? No. <laughs> Are you sure? Oh, 100%. I didn't even think this about is that. This post-Hitlerian blimp technology. They're, they what? had they Man-sized all sized right... owl blimps. Yes. Why? It was the rage. It was 76. <laughs> no, was listen, they made, they made mini test blimps with wings and reflectors, red yeah, reflectors. Exactly. For what fucking purpose? To, for pre-Hitlerian uh, blimps, for travel. As a warning. Yeah. As to a whom? Warning. To people to think it's not a blimp. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, blimps aside. I really like the fact this thing refuses to use its wings. It has these wings. And they just won't do anything. And it's like, no. And it floats. Well, <laughs> it pulls the fucking the, super supposed, It oh, really man. does. All it right. really does. To it's me, amazing. that's the scariest part. Like, you see this fucking giant owl-like thing with this fucking ghastly face, as she calls it. And he's glowing right it just and hovers. It, and it hu- huffs off the tree. And you're like, oh, it's going to take off. And it just floats no, toward you. A, like, dude, what a it, fucking it pulls a Chris nightmare. Angel. Yes, exactly. Well, I mean, you can still glide a bit. I feel, I feel you know, the way I see it, it's not horizontal at all. No, it no, remains no, completely either. vertical. Yeah, it's standing. Wings like Christ like and, yeah, and, and it's it's extension. Just, it's coming at and you. And it's just like, like yeah, come like, at me, bro. Adamantly, come at like, me. Watch me not use my wings. And it just oh, floats at you. That's oh, the Jesus so Christ. worst thing I've that's, ever seen. Yeah, in my that's like some exorcist shit. Yeah, right. I'm not taking Blimp off the table or Satan. For uh, that we'll never take, <laughs> I never want you to take Satan <laughs> off right, the table. Good. We never but do. Here, can I ask you guys a serious question right now? No. Sure. About Origins? Nope. About Origins? Yeah. The Marvel Comics Wolverine? Nope, nope, no. Nope, nope. I mean, the, the origi- universe? Origins of the Owlman. Okay. Oh. Is it Hell or Space? Oh. oh just curious. Just curious what you guys okay. think. What's your gut instinct? Extraterrestrial? Demon. Go. Demon. Hell or Space? Demon. Hell. Yeah, I hell think demon. we're leading hell. Yeah, we're so it's hell. hell or hell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hell or hell. Excellent. Yeah, it's all hell. After this thing began floating towards the unnamed uh, student from the Field Museum of Chicago, she says, I just screamed, then turned, and ran for my life. Absolutely an appropriate reaction. Solid response. I would join her in that. Yeah. 
The whole experience was totally irrational and dreamlike. In parentheses, nightmare. Friends tell me that there is a tradition of a phantom owl man in that district. Now I know why. There's a tradition of... Well, I mean, this happened in 95, so the big flap was in the late 70s. Oh, so no she, pun intended. So she's referring to that as the phantom owl man. Well, she's referring it to it as a phantom. Maybe, maybe that's what the people in the area that she knows, like, oh, it's a phantom owl man. But it's, right. there's no reason to indicate that it's fucking wow. ghostly. or. In, well, no, I mean, they, I they, guess that it doesn't fu- Maybe it is. It's It certainly has a paranormal smack to it. I don't know why they call it the phantom owl maybe, man. Maybe. Oh, it's a good ring. I yeah. mean, it's got a nice ring to it. Well, generally, I mean, it, it physically affects things. If, if something shot up and they heard crackling like it's going through trees. So, so yeah, you know, that's solid. Phantom, yeah, I feel yeah. like that's physically there. Yeah, it's corporeal. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. But who's to say, well, phantoms aren't corporeal, I guess, but paranormal things can, I guess, manifest themselves in either sort of intangible or yeah. hyper-tangible yeah. I'm saying fashion. Not, I'm saying not a ghost, I guess, is what I mean yeah, by no, that. Yeah, no, I or agree. Not, not tangible. Okay. So, tangible. there's a tradition of the Phantom Owl Man in the district. Now I know why. I have seen the Phantom myself. Mm. Please don't publish my real name and address don't give your real name and address to a fucking stranger. Yeah, you don't know what it, you don't know what fucking Simon Parker is going to do with your info. Yeah, yeah, that's easy Seriously. to get around. Don't ask yeah. them. Not just don't give it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, don't. For the love of God, this could adversely affect my career. Now I have to rethink my worldview entirely. Yours, very sincerely scared, eyewitness. Okay. Well, stop taking drugs. I mean, Betty, eyewitness. If it's going to really affect your worldview, like, I mean. Embrace it, maybe. Time for a change. Mm. Be a little more open minded. Be a little more accepting. Be cool. Calm down. I, don't listen. worry about phantom gliders. If I saw this, before, okay. Like, I would seriously, like, maybe it's terrifying to her and she just couldn't do it, but, like, especially if you're a marine biologist and you have some sort of schooling and stuff. Right. And you do things, and you test, and there's there's a thing, right? I would go, I'd have to go back and oh, in the look light of day, one hundred percent, and round and try to get evidence. Or yeah, as something. a scientist, that would be what check you check the do. branch, see if yeah, there's. But I would go home and be like, guess what? Worldview. There's shown. phantom owls. I guess that's the deal. <laughs> yeah, I'm giving up on my degree. Or maybe I mean, not that she did, but maybe she stayed educated but became more open minded, and she's now searching the allegedly seven seas. I think it's eleven. We'll Maybe get, we'll get into that okay. later. But there's no indication Looking for unknown entities, animals, right. cryptids, as well as standard ops marine biology shit. Or it could have just ruined well, it. Well, I think or that it could have wrecked it. It falls under it, that yeah. anyway. You're just if you're looking, you're looking, and what you find is what you find. Yeah, that's true. Like, and what that's you find just, in the ocean is mind-boggling yeah, half the time. It's horror-filled right. and. True. Right. But I, I kind of feel bad for it because because you imagine I mean none of us are grounded. Uh, that deeply in the constructs of reality that other people need to survive. But if you're a scientific person that just absolutely needs it to be just, you know, defined, illustrated, corroborated, and, right. and you suddenly are, you know, again, you have something thrown into the fucking works that messes it all up. That's got to be fucking just mind. It's mind bending. It's got to be. Yeah. Kind of earth shattering for some people. Yeah. Huh? But I don't think I never, I never stop looking for that thing. No, I would set up shop in Cornwall and be there twenty four seven. Like I just, I gotta, I gotta know. And then, what do you do if there's just absolutely no evidence at all? You can't ignore what you experienced, right? Then, how, what do you do? Somehow, you got to be like, oh, yeah. I guess in that case, <laughs> it, would be, it would be kind of like world, like world shattering that you just. But on the other hand, you don't want to be the goddamn Monon hobo. Who's like a promising student who ends up like in a tent camp constantly? Oh, he just gives up everything. Yeah. Just yeah, looking constantly to prove this one. Like See that I had a life once, but <laughs> Fox Mulder gone way astray. Yeah. Looking for that goddamn owl man. Let's wrap this up. Let's do it. While Downs admits to being in possession of the woman's name and address, he has respected her wish for privacy and has adamantly maintained her anonymity. While her name may be under wraps, it is difficult. It is difficult to dismiss the fact that as a student of biology at Chicago's esteemed field museum, her testimony that this bizarre flying fiend has forced her to rethink her quote-unquote worldview should not be taken lightly. Nevertheless, the question remains, what is the Owl Man of Cornwall? Researchers have suggested everything from an infernal apparition, apparition again, to a runaway extraterrestrial. Still, others have speculated that the similarities between this beast and those of the more extensively chronicled Mothman are too obvious to dismiss. Although the Prophet of Doom aspects seem to be missing in the Cornwall case, as aforementioned. Sure. So basically what we have 
And there, and I think there have been other sightings. There's probably been unreported sightings. I've heard mm-hmm. of sketchier other sightings of like little girls running away in terror, but all of that's pretty vague. We have a pretty good general picture of the owl man, and yeah. now we need to break this shit down. All right. Um. So a couple things here, skeptically speaking, is that this dude apparently seems to get all the info from the folks. Nobody else can get it. That's so something that has worried some people. Angle, yeah. A little bit of a shade. Not well, because then there's no objectivity. Like ex- for only one exactly. dude has all of it, then yeah, there's then one dude has all of it. Yeah, you're not getting a, uh, a a a wide look at this. You're just getting this this one guy's take on it with with all the different interviews and sightings that he's taken from these people. So that's a little bit shady. What is interesting though is that even from um, aspects of the case that he didn't necessarily cover, that other people did. Everyone is reporting somewhat of the same things. The biggest thing that sticks out to me being the claw-like feet. Yes. And I, the obvious owl man appearance, but everything, whenever they mention these claw-like or these crab-like Well, I think feet, they all mentioned gray silver Yeah, gray as silver, well. crab-like, and, 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 and uh, gaping ma, uh, gaping And maw. most of them had yeah. glowing eyes. Almost, yeah, almost all of them had glowing eyes, and all but one Only had one was, slanted. Yeah, the one was yeah, round, the rest of them were round. slanted. So there's enough things here, enough tying it all together, taking this guy out of the picture. There's enough tying it all together to make me think like, okay, well, these are definite, like... These are definitely the, the, the descriptors of this creature that are not, you really can't misinterpret them. People are saying it, they're there, it's pretty solid. So, hell or space. Yeah, really, there you though. Go. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's sort of befuddling because it really, as we said in the beginning, it seems to betray any, any hope of a true biological designation. And it doesn't use its fucking wings. Yeah, that's why it's I just can't, so weird. you know, an eagle owl and a lot of, I, I get it. I really think there's something to be said for misinterpretation but this sort of consistency like you just said of of descriptors of this thing its size it's yeah. uh you know sometimes it flaps once and shoots up in the air sometimes it doesn't flap at all and floats in mm-hmm. a horrific way at you um yes if you want to be a hardcore skeptic and give no fucks about just the odds of this happening you could say two girls the melling sisters made something up everyone else read that interpretation Right, restated freak, freak it when they were out. there. Yeah, some maybe freaked themselves out, or just. But I can't believe that that many people over that long of a time would just hoax it. It doesn't make a lick of sense to me that well, that would happen. A lot of them wanted to remain anonymous, which is which so actually you're, adds you're, to the legitimacy. You're in getting some nothing ways. out of it. Be. You're not. You're not getting any any you know fame or claim to fame. Like I saw the owlman. Like no one knows because you're not giving your your info. Absolutely. Out. Yeah. Well, what, what, does anyone know if they were trying to places were making. St- a stir out of this where people making not shirts maybe shirts but, yeah, but again, was there any event there's still oh, I mean I don't know there's always a stupid reason I don't reason know for if there's do that. Well, yeah. by the way if there is a 1978 Owlman shirt out there oh, fuck oh, just, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, just it, yeah. anybody that but, would want to try to again, do it again I've said this before I'll say it again I, I in no way think uh, locals exploiting a phenomenon for profit right. because they need to make a living and they just want to fucking make a quick buck in any way invalidates original eyewitness sightings. A lot of people say, oh, yeah. look at all. And look, at Roswell is a fucking tourist hub that completely Dude, the Mothman Festival? Oh, Point looks Pleasant. fucking amazing. It does. I wanted to go this year and I couldn't, yeah. but and, and, it's dope. And just because these sure. people are making a living off it doesn't mean it didn't happen. Right. Yeah, no, I didn't say that. I'm right. just saying, yeah. and I'm saying anything past, like maybe the original right. two, right. anything after that. I mean, you can like a ske- you can skeptically look at it and you can say okay these people just got freaked out because they saw an owl. An it's owl, not not it's, po- it's possible. It's, po- it's possible. I mean, and I, I guess at least in this area, for from our my experiences, owls are kind of a rare sight to behold. Yeah, we don't see them all the time, but when I do see an owl, I'm not like, you know, it's the size of a man with feet of a crab. Like it's not. Uh, Where's your yeah. beak? Nice yeah, eyes. Like, I mean, yeah, have you ever seen an eagle owl? They're big. I looked up a picture of an eagle owl. They got some fucking bomb ass eyebrows. By oh the yeah, way. if eagles have, <laughs> yeah. or if they, if they have eyebrows, and they, they have big ass horns, horns too. Like yeah. their, their shit gets pointy. Yeah, yeah. but it's kind of hard. I, it's kind of. I think. I mean, again, maybe eyewitness. You're. It's late. It's twilight. You're freaking out. Whatever. Okay, fine. You can get scared and think a si- size of a man, but it's not the size of a man. It's not anywhere near the size of a man. No. So. Could they have misconstrued an owl? Yes. Do I think so? Absolutely not. Well, that many is where I get a little dubious. Yeah, the now, sheer amount of sightings is. Let's not yeah. let's not ignore the obvious. 
hobo with a hang glider. Oh, yeah. Back to the... And the key difference being <laughs> not orange reflectors. Right. 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 Yeah, yeah, red this time yeah. around. So I think we got this nailed. Okay. I think he's got mad skills. Shields has no idea what it takes to hang glide. He can totally jump off the old Monon Church. And it's always called the old Monon Church. It's just yeah. not the Monon Church. Is there Church. a new one? Well, it's the old. No, there isn't. But I mean, in grand 1300s, it's, it's fucking old. old. But yeah. it's fucking funny. Yeah, 1300s So, old so fucking this super skilled hobo jumps off with his sweet suit. He's got a jetpack because he's ex-military. It's the way he floats. And he's just rocking the fucking woods around this fucking church. I think that's just the only thing that makes sense. So yes. true. I want to believe in my heart of hearts that it is a rogue hand glider pilot. Right. Just terrorizing people. He may have a jetpack. He doesn't need to use his wings. He's there for terror. <laughs> He's there for terror. He's there. Wow, for, for terror. terror. Oh my god, for that terror. would be a great He's catch there. line on a he film. He doesn't care about for the terror. feelings of others. Oh man, dot dot dot. He's, He's there, there for, for terror. terror. <laughs> <laughs> and now we gotta make that shirt. Yeah. Seriously, no shit. Doubt. Oh jeez. All right, Chris. I, what, I love it. So, all right, real quick. I'm gonna say a spiritual demon. Maybe. What, what other <laughs> kind is there? I mean, oh, my God. A non-spiritual demon? I don't know how spiritual to deal with that. Yeah, well, spiritual remember, remember we talked about the, the spiritual... Actually, <laughs> 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 is there a Sepultura song by no. any chance? Remember we talked about the death, spiritual... Death, dude. This, this spiritual spirit, oh, that's right. That's right. right it's death. Um, it's death, dude. R.I.P. R- 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 Chuck. Did we talk about... I don't know why I tossed R.I.P. R- Chuck ahead, too. <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah, I Respect. Do. Yeah. Uh, remember we talked about this, the spiritual Satan, remember? Yes. Yeah, so spiritual possible spiritual god demon. yeah no i just i'll never stop laughing at the implication that a demon could be non-spiritual you, 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 have you ever met one i hope not uh, there you go that has no that, that rebuttal has on no up. effect on your original statement this i like true. that you said it with confidence oh, a yeah. lot a lot of people would bend like oh yeah he's got a point no <laughs> but i'm like what the fuck dude i say everything with confidence oh um, <laughs> here's the thing though honestly before we drop this that fascinates me is so many analogous elements to the Mothman. So many. There from, is, no, there's, from there's Mothman there. flying without flapping its wings yep. to bright red glowing eyes. Um, a lot of times wings that don't seem to be able to support the weight of its body but still manage to fly anyway. Yep. Grayish. Mothman was yeah. always described as grayish. This is always described as grayish silver and in one case grayish <clears throat> brown. But um, no profit so, of doom angle. Yeah. Which is interesting. But we can't. I mean, this is right off of Falmouth Bay and the fucking Atlantic Ocean. Who Maybe knows it was a if there was some Dune? if there was some maritime tragedy that nobody just bothered to associate. I mean, we know about the bridge collapse, right. that tragic silver bridge, bridge collapse, which because it ties right in. And and I've often thought to myself, listen, I'm a little skeptical about the whole idea. We're going to do a Mothman eventually. We have to. He's a fucking headliner. He deserves the props. Yeah. But but I've been really sketchy. I'll give you a little foreshadowing on associating Mothman with the collapse of this bridge. It's very likely that a massive tragedy like this just diverted everyone's attention. That is, I mean, everyone probably knew somebody or at least knew somebody who knew somebody who died. Uh, It's a horrible tragedy for a small town. You're not going to think about these fucking phantasmagoric floaters that are fucking around. You know, these little things that would amuse a small town and attract people like John Keel and paranormal investigators because it's fascinating and worthy investigation would dissipate instantly in the face of a great tragedy. So I think... um, I'm not saying 100% that I don't think Mothman is an oracle of fucking doom, but I'm not as convinced of it. That's become like the standard line that that's what he is. And so perhaps the Cornish Owl Man is very much of the same species, doing whatever thing, be it be it paranormal, be it... I, mean, I really it, don't think it's biological. It, if it's some weird entity, maybe it is the same type of entity from West Virginia. I mean, it very well could be. Uh, why what, not? Whatever's going on in Chicago nowadays, like because there's a bunch of alleged Mothman things in Chicago, so... Or it could be drones. Could, could, but... now, could it be? Now, this oh. is something you're going to fucking love, Mark. Could it be oh. something magical? Could it be? It's a certain could type be. of demon slash uh, non-human entity, an elemental. Who the fuck knows what that can be uh, invoked? Uh, what, what's a word? When you raise something magically. When you summon? Summon. summon. Yes, thank you. So something that gets summoned, if you know the right series of fucking spells or whatever the fuck it would be, right. and that you know somebody did it in Chicago recently, somebody did it in Point Pleasant in the '60s, somebody in the '70s did it in no, Cornwall. I see oh, what you think the Pazuzu acolytes, or a, tra- yeah. or a traveling wizard or sorceress oh. that just 
the stopped, tra- stopped in Virginia, stopped traveling in England. It lives in Chicago the now. The secret life of the traveling <laughs> wizard. <laughs> Shit, I did it again. And I said, <laughs> out of the flames. It's like, God damn it. Crap, it's always an owl man. <laughs> <laughs> this guy just wanted to look at apple pie. Yeah, I know. Yes. Here we hung- go. I'm real hungry. <laughs> oh, fuck. That's all right. An owl man. Another one. Oh, yeah. Damn it. The first one looked kind of like a moth. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like a mom. This one's a little more like an owl. <laughs> all right. This is just fucking I mean, up. are we all kind of Chris? What are you thinking here? I don't what, fucking know. I mean, do I? I'll, let's. Say, <laughs> I don't fucking. I don't, the I thing mean, about reports like this, and I feel like it, it happens a lot, is you get a couple first sightings like that that corroborate pretty well. Right. Then and you then get it, ones that are it, little worse, and then maybe you get another one that's kind of close. So you're trying to. Like, so the, yeah, the lady that saw thin. Batman at the church, I'm gonna. Kind of put that one I'm to the taking side. that one off well, the side, too. Well, granted, yeah. all she said was devil monster, so I, it I'm could no, be identical I, or... That's what I mean. It could be Bruce could Wayne. It's too, it's too vague Jersey to really devil. put that in, 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 that's the, legit. We're in, that the, in the thing. Um, <laughs> Bruce Wayne. And the, one, the lady that saw it that was 30 meters out, that one's a little weird, too, to me. That's It's not really close. That's kind of far. And I need more, like... If it came toward, like, how close well, did it get? Did exactly. it get, like, to it 10 did feet? Toward her, yeah. but, no, or, I, or did I, it come, like, just a couple feet and then fly away, look toward her? Like, like that's it's 90 feet away. away. It just, it, By the time it, it the floated, thing is 85 floating, yeah. feet away, I'm fucking booking. This, like, right. I'm not waiting for this to get, like, unless it fucking floated fast. And it's right. one of those fucking right in your face, yeah. focus horror films. I just feel like, like yeah. right in your face. That's a little far away, I think, at that time to really get some deets. She is like more marine biologist, sir. Respect her observation skills. But her world was shaking. We don't. We don't know if we can even trust her now. Can you? I mean, just can you imagine seeing a big <laughs> That's thing? That's unbelievable. Don't judge. It's nothing against her. I'm sure yeah. she's a beautiful and awesome person, and, and spiritually and physically. But I'm just saying that. No spiritual. I don't know. I know what is up. <laughs> just tossing it in uh, there. Let's can the spiritual for a second. Joe over here. <laughs> if you saw, if we saw, look, we're in Montezuma and right. we're looking somewhere, and it's like on 9:30 at night, and we see a fucking. <laughs> Heron that doesn't look like a heron, and all of a sudden it goes. Right, we're gonna be like, oh shit, we're out. Then we get, yeah, we're. Yeah. Pow, we're okay. pow. So yeah. I'm just gonna be going on all on right. the the one the glowing eyes, okay. the silver, all those all corroborating. Right, yeah, based on the things that you think are corroboratable, so what do you think? It's either in reality, it's just a big fucking owl, and everyone's on dope, <laughs> which. <laughs> Wow. End of story. Although it is the seventies. If it's real, I mean, it has to. I feel like it has to be a big ass owl. If it's. They're misinterpreting. It would have to be if, a gigantic if not, fucking owl. I just I don't fucking know because it does so many weird things. Right. Um, so are you leaning towards the idea that it's a misinterpreted owl? No, I'm just saying. If, I mean, how do you feel about a demon? <laughs> <laughs> how do you feel about a that's demon? I don't know. It doesn't do demon things. But it doesn't really. not do demon yeah. things. Yeah. Jesus that's Christ, Christ. <laughs> that is no kind of. Yeah, that's not evidence. Of course. But, uh, oh my God. But it did say do you the, know what the podcast one. This is. Um, it is clearly fucking evidence. Wow. Was it the couple? The one they said, they said it looked it would look down and sideways. That's like a bird maneuver. Yeah, absolutely. With, with yeah, its fucking totally. head. Yeah, so I'm like, that's actually a, a standard uh, outlook. Yeah, like back, back and they, forward yeah. and down. Yeah. I think, yeah. But you know what? That doesn't mean that something that is half humanoid. Half I'm not owl saying it was a bird. I'm just saying do that's that. Kind of a right. weird bird move. I mean, in my mind, is to a bird use move. Mark's fucking reductive arguments. <laughs> that could also be a demonic head move. That is a spiritual move. That, yeah, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> yeah, listen, listen. All right, but I'm listening <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but if it's <laughs> listen, yeah, don't fucking take the demon off the table. If it's not a bird, table. then it's a bird no, creature put, put of some in type. The corner. It seems like yeah. I, mean, uh, I don't know what. I just but I don't it, fucking there's know. There's no account of it seemingly tormenting anyone, attacking. Yeah, anyone. it's just it really, kind of. It really just stalks these women. That's but all I, it does. I love to state not for the record, it takes off. Sometimes if creatures do nefarious shit and there's no eyewitnesses, if it scoops somebody off the ground, oh. takes them up in the air, devours their brain matter and rips off the back of their neck and it's a big bloody headless corpse and then just flies it over Falmouth oh. Bay and drops yeah. it in so Morgwar can eat the remains, then you'd never know how many people the fucking owl man has killed. It might be a body count in the dozens. You can't count be. the bodies if there are no bodies. Boom. Oh, I just made that up. I love it. Trademark. Oh. Mark Stores. Wow. Making a fucking trucker hat out of that. Shit. <laughs> I'm making a pin. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to put it for sale. Big enamel pin. <laughs> or, or, is it just, or, or can it change forms? Can it just live anywhere and look like anything? Very well could be. Then it could, it, it be, well then could, it could be, be the same creature. Very well could be the thing in the water. I mean, for all we know. Who knows? All right. So you're suggesting it could be 
Morgwar could like take a dinosaur dip and then transform into a didn't we talk about sized well, owl? Uh, we, we had a we had a somewhat not that long ago talk about the uh, Loch Ness monster actually being Dude, a land if, creature. If you can always talk about the, the folk and the, there's no rules here, look, yeah, right? Exactly, yeah. So who's, there's no reason to why think they it, something can just morph into something else. Exactly, it could be very well anything. Yeah, but once you fucking put that on the table. Then it's all bets are off. It's nutso town. Well, yeah, of course. No, it that's is. The whole but point. that's why I never bring it up. Right. Like I never and talk I about the weed. Because the I have to. <laughs> right. Oh, well, let's yeah. let's say the fucking the sacred words that I half loathe and half delight in. Ultra terrestrial. Uh, oh, it could be a trickster thing from and the there, nether. But you know what's interesting about that though is oh, there is the a lot of different thing. things happening at that in that time in the area. That's the thing that You've also got the excites women attacking me. the feral cat. Or the, oh, the, the, yeah. the women! <laughs> shit, we got the Cosby cats <laughs> <laughs> being assholes. God damn it! Anyway, you have so the feral ta- gosh, shit! You got the feral cats attacking the women. Yeah. Yes. You got the mass bird suicide. Yes. You've got uh, the teleporting cow, <laughs> which is amazing. So or cows, they, multiple, not multiple. just one cow. So actually, you may have bet yourself. Ah. You may oh, have backed yourself into a corner. I, I you have may bet- have put yourself in the corner. Explain. Pazuzu. Oh, baby. No one puts baby in the oh, corner. Baby, you're in the corner. Well, I'm a very big baby. You say no no ultra terrestrial, but this could very well be <laughs> signs of an ultra terrestrial because of all the weird shit happening in the area. Ha ha! That's just not. Or not. <laughs> or not. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 <laughs> I accept that. Fair enough. There you go. It is it definitely is, it is a, weird. There's a it bunch is a of shit pile going of weird now. shit. It's not so much the heat wave and the drought. I mean, well, I, no, that, yeah, I don't get those that. Happen. I don't understand yeah. why that's like, like part of it. We had a drought here like two like, years ago. Was, like everything was brown. It was and a creepy burned. summer that year. The humidity was 83%. Yeah, like the, people, people got sunburned if they didn't wear sunblock. Got really thirsty. <laughs> yeah. And then oh. they drank some more. And then the cows. Yeah. They teleported to Farmer Jones Field. Now, see, that's a problem. The yeah. teleportation. It's, it's like, it's like second. normal, 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 batshit, batshit, totally fucking yeah, the off bat the wall. Yeah, batshit is what I want to hear about more. Absolutely. So there, are, but, there, but you can't deny that, that there are some things happening in the area. Oh, no, I wouldn't try. I mean, Jesus that's Christ, part of there's, the fascinating... there's a fucking an, an ocean monster, right? Yeah. Up there. And then a you sea got, monster, some call it, the but whatever. the wall, and then you've <laughs> got all kinds of other bullshit Ooh. happening. So it may, you know what? How cool would it have been to live Just in that saying. area at that time? Like, especially if you're a geek kid like us, if you were like those fourteen year old girls. If you're a fourteen year old there, you got an owl man on the hill, you got yeah. a sea monster below, fucking suicidal yeah. birds. Cows yeah. can Cows just show just up anywhere. Whenever. Yes, yeah. oh, I want a cow stargate. Have... <laughs> 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 it's a stargate that only teleports oh, cows. Where is the cow gate? Give yeah, me the fucking cow gate. Where does it send the cows? No, I think that would be a blast as a kid. That would fucking be awesome. I would be there all the fucking time. Yeah. Looking for and shit. 76, there's some great music. Oh, oh yeah. you know I love the 70s. Oh, you just listen to Deep Purple. That's all it is. It's exactly looking for cows that hoping perfect. they're going to appear <laughs> yeah. in a field. Yeah, just stoned to the gills and paranoid as fuck. Like, what do we do, dude? Your eyes are just little slits, and you're like, you're the fucking owl man. You're like, I'm not the owl man. <laughs> It's the back and forth. Everyone freaks the fuck out. Dope, I love that dope. scenario. Dope. It's, uh, so it's dope. All right. So I'm going to say. Ultra, ultra terrestrials yeah, on dope. Know. Yeah, ultra terrestrials no on dope. I'm just going to go with um, just because I think it sounds super cool. And I'm going to say demon. Because why not? It very well could be. And people think it is too. So I'm not alone in this. Do you want to join my demon boat, Rob? No, I don't necessarily Fine. want Chris, to. Chris, do join my demon no. boat? No. I'm alone in my demon boat. You are. I'm all by myself. As always. <laughs> yeah. It's always me alone. Uh. I want to change my mind the next five minutes. Convince me. Oh, shit. I know one thing. I am convinced that it is not biological. I am convinced that this is not a cryptozoological phenomenon. It really smacks of the paranormal. There is a consistency in the descriptions enough for me to think that this is a real manifestation of something and that it is not biological, like I said. So that just leaves open a my traveling wizard theory, which, by the way, <laughs> okay, well, I'm a fan of. Sure. Um, or... You know, you would think it was, as I said early on in my Great Slayer reference, a haunting of the Monon Chapel. This was built in the 1300s. Um, there are, who knows what kind of arcane shit happened in this building? Who knows how many people died in its construction? If somebody cursed Jan Church because their husband perished off the steeple, or who knows? I mean, I, I don't know the details of any of this, but the, steeple. But th- the fact that it's around this church is a factor that you can't ignore. So I'm thinking it is a paranormal entity that has manifested itself around this church for reasons unknown to me anyway. And uh, 
So are you backing my demon that. theory? I'm not saying it might be demonic. I'm, but I'm just saying something paranormal. Yeah, but so, but that could physically affect the world. Is it here or is it not here? Or they just see it? No, here? I think it's here. I think it's tangible. So it's physically here. Okay. So but, I, but I think paranormal things, even though again it's sketchy, it's not my expertise. Mm-hmm. But I think that they can sometimes be corporeal, sometimes be, <laughs> you know, phantasms. Right. I I think it's not like a ghost that is strictly speaking always just an apparition that you see. It's, I mean, I got room in the demon boat. We can fit this in the demon boat totally. You really? I mean, want, it doesn't really. You really have want to, me to ride the demon boat? It doesn't with you. have to be fucking blind. It could just be a demon. It could be a haunting. Yeah, well, a, de- I mean, a, a, a demon a would fall under a paranormal, technically. Yeah. I, so you're guessing what? I'm in the demon boat. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I mean, the yeah, it's right. the same umbrella, I feel yeah, like. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Fair enough. All right. Fine. I did, you know, I wasn't strictly speaking going demon, but you know what? If it fits under that umbrella, I am glad to join you. Christopher? I, I hope it's black with a I carved just, Viking-like head of a dragon. Dude, I don't we have, know. It's fucking dope. It doesn't seem like it's something that could exist okay. uh, in nature. Okay, cool. Could so be, could be, could be a demon. But if it's their church, maybe it's a weird gar- gargoyle, Ooh. which would still be paranormal. Which still makes makes Chris it a, a makes it third a demon. member of the uh, demon you, boat crew. Oh, are you joining the boat? I, I'm just I'm trying to find another option. But <laughs> <laughs> get in the car. I'm trying. Guess what? Okay, it's a space demon. Right, yeah, space yeah, demon. Woo! Oh, it's there space. It it's space and hell. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's a both. Well, the fact is, some people say it could be an extraterrestrial because there were UFO sightings. So I guess yeah. we're, we're well, jumping that's, on, uh, and I'm not trying to make this podcast go any longer. I know we all got on the demon boat, but, <laughs> but the fact that UFOs were seen in an area right. at a certain time, this creature seems to be really uh, somehow attached to the church and the surrounding woods. I do not think it is an extraterrestrial phenomenon. I'll say that. I so don't think it is. I am okay. still no, in the demon either. boat. No, I'm still in the demon boat, too. All right. You know what? And this is the one time we're all in the demon boat. But the teleporting cows? Yeah. That's E.T. as fuck. That is pretty I need I need more information on that one. The, 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 Jonathan the Downs, yeah. who, who I mentioned in this article, has written the book on it. Unfortunately, I don't have it yet. You'd think, oh, yeah, Rob would have read this book before the podcast. Right. But seriously, I want to read the book. He, he wrote the full book on it. I don't know how much he has in there about teleporting cows. All Maybe right. he does. All right. So there you have it. That is our take on the Owlman of Cornwall. Indeed it is. Uh, A classic. I'm sorry to interrupt you. A classic case. Enjoy the demon boat. Ha! Was it a boat or a car? It was a fucking boat. You said boat 18 times. Shit, we should have said like a hand glider. A demon hand glider. Uh, Too late. Fuck. A demon blimp. Ooh. No, I wouldn't get on. Hearts are broken. Honestly, it's an alien. As soon as it's a blimp, I'm out. The demon. Feel the demon's blimp. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's really obscure. Be sure to follow us on the social medias, Twitters, Instagrams, the Facebook. Be sure to leave ratings and reviews for this podcast in the iTunes and the Apple Podcast app. Stick around after the music. We got some reviews. As you mentioned at the top of the show, oh, we've got some stuff for sale. The links for that will be in the description of this podcast, um, along with other links referring to stuff in the show. And things we talked about in the beginning of the show that I can't really remember. Fair enough. Thank you for joining us, wow. and we're talking with you soon. Bye. See, see you later. <laughs> Bye. Hang gliding like a motherfucker. We should have just done with a blimp. Just gotten out of the demon blimp? Yeah, demon blimp. Sounds what? dope. All right, that actually sounds cool. With some fucking demon. But it's going to be flammable it's as fuck. It's going it's to be the fucking Hindenburg yeah, all over again. Yeah, I don't trust that at all. Yeah, no, I don't want that. No. Yeah. Just, the, the, first off, demon dirigible. That just sounds better. Oh, Secondly, so cool. fuck no. It's just too dangerous. I'm all not right. going to do it. We'll be talking to you. Bye. Goodbye, my friends. All right, cool. Thank you for sticking around for some ratings and reviews. Actually, I found this one. I think we this may have been sent to us uh, on Instagram. Um, I don't actually have a source for it, but this is from Matt, Matt Gilbert, and he says uh, he's from Pennsylvania. He says, hey, guys, I usually listen through Spotify. Unfortunately, there isn't a review system, but I absolutely love the show. I've been following since episode one, and my favorite is definitely the Grampus Gawking at the Virgin. <laughs> I would give this show a five-star review simply from the amazing quality and information covered from the show. Keep up the great work, guys. Well, thank you, man. Sweet. Gilbert. And absolutely. I'm pretty sure this came to us probably a couple months ago, um, so I'm sorry for the delay on this. I just couldn't figure out what the hell uh, where I found it. So anyway, Matt Gilbert. Thank you very much. Robert, what do you have going on over there on the old Facebook? The I've book got of faces. What a review got? from Josh Spiro, which is a pretty cool nice. fucking name. Yeah, cool. 
<clears throat> Five stars. Just started listening today, and now I can't stop. Great cryptid topics from entertaining dudes. I would love to hear an episode about Mokele Mbembe mm. or the shape-shifting Tanuki. Well, Josh, I love this... the Mokele Mbembe, mm-hmm. and here's where I'm going to wear my honesty and shame. I don't know what a shape-shifting Tanuki is. Really? <gasps> but God bless Have you Google. Been, been, you been bested? I, well, battle on the field of zoology. Just not knowing the name of a monster. Yeah, I guess so. Absolutely. All so, right. thanks for shaming me in front of yeah, everyone, no, Josh. His uh, life's worthless. You're right. That's what I'm here for. I'm, I'm apparently. Uh, I'm going to kill myself before the next pod. You're so it was really fun while it lasted. Demon boat. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you got kicked off the demon boat. Good job. Yeah. But anyway, I'm interested, and thank you very much for the kind review. This is coming to us from a Million Eggs. Five out of five. Is that right? Five out of five would recommend five stars. Right. Without, without, no, it's 10,000 eggs. I thought it was a million. Shit. Okay, no. Oh, mathless. But five, five out of five. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're off the fucking boat, too. I guess I'm the only one left. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Single or No, uh, until Jesus. I fail at something, then we're all off the boat. Yeah, then we're all fucking done. All right, five out of five stars would recommend... Um, it was a five-star rev- review from 10,000 Eggs. A uh, great and funny show with interesting topics. Reminds me of a mix of Monsters Among Us and Weird Tales and the Unexplained. Nice. So awesome. We get a little sure. Monsters Among Us uh, little reference in there. Our, our good buddies, Addy and, uh, and Derek over there Monsters Among Us. So They're cool. They're fucking awesome. That's awesome. Mm. Thank you very Love much. Love that podcast. Thank, thank you very much, 10,000 Eggs. I thought it was a million, and thankfully, Robert and Chris corrected me on my math and my inability to read and my inability to understand what five stars was. Hey, so, fair enough. You may heard it, you may not. Robert, what do you got? I've got a review from Drayton Lewis. Another awesome Ooh, name, Drayton. Geez. That's so unique. Can't say enough good things about this show. I've been an avid listener for a few months now, and each episode always impresses. Really love the more obscure topics from the realm of cryptozoology. The Cryptonaut Podcast is an extremely important part of my Monday ritual, Metal Sign Flames. Mm. Keep on killing it, guys. Thank you, Drake. Awesome. Heavy Shit. metal. Metal Sign and Flames. All right, so we're going to end our uh, reviews this episode with dudes. Oh. <laughs> Five-star review, <laughs> Spinner One. These guys make me wish I had friends who were into crypto so I could sit around and research this stuff with them. Keep up the good work. Also, I live near the first reported case of the black-eyed children. You should cover them. Yes. Mm. There you go. It's definitely on the list, 100%. I mean, I've already done the primary research. I've written an article about it in the past. I would have to update a little, but it's absolutely one that's on the docket. Yeah, yeah. we've talked about uh, delving into that one before, and it's uh, it's going to be a multi-part it's, gonna, it's a series, it's a big one, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, it's a real big one. It's a super, super big one. So there you have it. Thank you for joining us. Thank you again for all the kind words, the direct messages, or the DMs, as we call it, uh, the emails, the twitters, the Facebook messages, and of course, most importantly, the reviews. It helps the show out greatly. It, again, iTunes charts and whatnot. So keep those reviews coming and. Be talking to you. Bye again. Indeed. Se- second time. Bye. I know. Yeah, this is second goodbye. Isn't Tertiary. It? B- yeah. Do we need to even say goodbye in the natural pod know, anymore? Do we? Because now that we're doing it this way, I feel way, weird though. Because if people don't stick around, they're like, "Oh, they're assholes." They don't say goodbye. All right. I guess we. Man, can, I don't want to be we rude can throw to in a terse yeah. goodbye, and then a, a meaning it goodbye. Can we do like a like a podcast high five to them or something? Is that possible? An no. audio high five. An audio high five is probably. We don't not. have the tech. No, we don't. No, not at all. All right. All right. Well, you know what? We'll be talking to you. Bye. Bye. Ish. I'm still on the boat. You know what? <laughs> 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 fuck what Chris didn't fuck <laughs> up. Oh, <laughs> shit. Uh, Do we even get, like, demonic fucking life oh, vests? May- maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. I feel God bad. Damn, I didn't even want to get on the fucking boat, and now I'm oh, off. I'll, see, now I I'll save bad. you guys again. God damn You're it. You're welcome. <laughs> see ya. See ya. <laughs> You'd think someone else would have spotted him. All right, well, I'll start. Even if it had turned out to be a fancy dress... Should, should I give you more of a pause there? I'm sorry. Um, well, now we did anyway. Just just start from there. Start with even. There were reports. No. Even, even... No, there there have been no reports God so damn far it. as I know. We, see, we have to back it up because we fucking... Oh, start from the beginning? Yeah. D- just from the top of well, that paragraph. Well, the entire digression we just had wasn't horrible. No, 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 but I had to be able to cut All right. at the end. There have been no reports, so far as I know, of anybody else seeing the Birdman. Even if it turned out to be just a fancy dress hang glider, you'd think someone else would have spotted him. See, I'm sorry, but that's where I think if if you cut into that... 
I'm not going to cut into it. I'm just going to wait till after that and then cut into that. All right, because I think we should keep the whole hang glider. Yeah, bullshit. no, we are. No, All I right. know that, but I, but I need to have enough room in the beginning to okay. know where to go. So start. Right. Okay, so right. let, let's start with. Well, fuck. Now we're screwed. Why? Let's do. Um, Even if or. Well, wh- where did you? Where did we finish off after the digression? Well, the digression ended at fancy dress hang glider. Okay. Cool. All right. <clears throat> so to start with, you'd think. No, I'm going to start with even if because I would repeat that first part of the sentence because we would lose the track of that sentence after our digression. Do you know what I'm saying? So I I would naturally go back and read from there. Okay. Okay. Even if it turned out to be just a fancy dress hang glider, <laughs> you I'm right. Trust me, no, I am no, right. No, I, I know, but I'm trying to. Okay, no, I, I got it. I got it. Okay. You want to read? No, I don't. <laughs> even. God damn it. We want to edit. All right, there you go. <laughs> Fucker. No, I know it would take forever. Yeah, exactly. Mom and dad are fighting. <laughs> well, we're not fighting. I'm gonna slap. Just dad, dad, dad and dad are fighting. <laughs> dad, dad and other dad. dad. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me how to add it. All right, continue. Oh, cheers oh, you you fuck <laughs> Don't tell me what to do. And, and middle uh, fingers. And middle finger, middle finger, middle finger. Middle middle finger. finger. Okay, so okay, yeah, you're good. God damn it. According to author and cryptozoologist Jonathan Downs, some of the weirdness that Shields was referring to included droughts, floods, heat waves, hordes of... (laughs) I'm sorry. Sorry. Let's leave it at heat waves. I wrote that wrong. I wrote hordes of women attacking feral cats. (laughs) I was waiting to see if you were going to catch that. So I'm like, why the fuck are women attacking feral cats? You guys aren't going to believe this. (laughs) Women are attacking feral cats. Hordes of women. Oh, oh God. Yeah. As we were doing this, Rob mentioned that he was writing this drunk. Drunk as fuck. So. I had had been drinking a lot of whiskey and vodka with a a good buddy of mine, Danny T, if you're listening. And um, and so I got home at about 3.30 in the morning, and that's when I wrote this up and clearly it shows okay all right all right let me figure out how to say that hordes of feral cats attacking women yeah that's all. yeah, yeah. Just give me it not seems obvious just but attacking I feral cats. Yeah. thank you dick i didn't see you coming to my rescue fuck face oh, no, i was gonna let you hang oh, there why why because it's hilarious friendship it does not mean watch friends struggle Yes, it does. It kind of sometimes right. it, it does. Yes, sometimes no, it, it really yeah. does. I know. Yeah, exactly. In hordes, fact, that might be the key to friendship. Hordes of feral women. <laughs> hordes of women attacking feral cats. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! Well, I mean, at least the words were right. Yeah, it's not no. like you yeah. put a completely and different I, words I, in quite there. Quite honestly, I think that that's way more interesting than hordes of feral it cats attacking women. So much more women. interesting. Yeah, totally. Oh. Well, yeah, if the feral cats are dicks. All right. Okay. A man named Simon Parker. What the fuck does that even mean? I was going to ask you, like, a man mm. named Simon Parker. Where does it go? It just like, It ends. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. It really is. All right. I wrote a sentence in line. It's a man named it's, Simon. It's, it's a Rob's, lot of whiskey. It's Rob's whiskey writing a man <laughs> named, named Simon. Simon Parker. <laughs> okay. Pause again. I'm sorry to get so many pauses. Did I read that a little fucking weird? No. No, it's okay. fine. You want to wait for Chris to read yeah. the final paragraph? Yep. I'm sorry about so many pauses, man. I know I made your editing a fucking no, nightmare. No, it's fine. It's fine. The, the Listen, pauses when, are no big deal. When Mark is listening to this at a later date, I want him to know that I love him and I respect him and I'm really grateful for all the shit he puts up with, with me. And <laughs> You know, future Mark, I want you to know that I love you just as much as I love current Mark. <laughs> past Mark, I want you to know God you're an unbearable you. asshole. That's true. Thanks, past Mark. I'm glad you became future Mark and you're a lot cooler. I think, I think you're a swell guy. Anyway, continuing the saga... Of James we're, we're, K. Owlman. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't even know. When we last visited Mr. Owlman. Oh, my God. Where, this is like exactly. a reoccurring radio saga. Where, where like a leave? weekly episode. That's what I was about to ask. Where did you leave off? I have no fucking idea. Hold on. Uh, 